I assert the argument that proving our world as being engaged by non-human intelligence isn't merely a scientific venture, but it's really also a moral imperative. Here, Stephen Greensuit wrote today, 79% of you said there's at least some hard evidence and facts that point to UFOs being extraterrestrial. Please post said evidence below. Thanks. And then UAP Expedition Group, which is a scientific outfit striving to attain scientific evidence that our world is being engaged by non-human intelligence, writes, give us a couple more months and we'll send you the link. Today, I'll, I also came across a tweet where someone was saying that a, a prominent scientist had claimed that when they were a child, there were non-human beings in their bedroom. And he was criticizing the science, saying, well, that scientist is completely wrong. When he was a child, what actually happened is he was having a, a, a monster is in my bedroom experience, a normal childhood experience where young children perceive something scary is in the room and something scary is not. And that by this scientist claiming this happened to him when he was a child is feeding into self-delusion and normalizing this kind of delusion. Now, I'm just going to be honest. I really don't like when people try to uh, stigmatize the idea that, it, that, that some people may have experiences with non-human intelligence in their bedroom. And, and I don't like the stigmatization of it. I don't like when people try to shame others for claiming this has taken place. And I don't like when people claim that this has to be false. There's no way this can be true. It's a delusion of the mind. And the reason I don't like this is simply because I, th I personally think the evidence that there are machines in our skies and oceans that are unaccounted for is compelling. And if it's compelling, that means it might be true. And if it's true, that means that it's no longer outlandish or irrational that the beings behind these craft may be interacting with human beings on a very personal level. And so this gets me back to the question of, is, is proving there are non-human machines in our airspace only a, a scientific venture? And I would argue, no, it's also a moral imperative because if we're all in the dark about this presence, that, that feeds into what I consider a very gross behavior, which is telling people that they're delusional. You didn't see a unambiguous craft when you were in the forest. It was a stealth bomber or an airplane. You didn't see a being in your bedroom. That was just your mind playing games on you. You were uh, dealing with sleep paralysis and what have you. And of course, this is not black and white because a lot of times it probably was that person's mind playing games on them and it probably was sleep paralysis. But the point is that it, it's not necessarily always the mind playing games on the person. It's not necessarily always the person in the midst of sleep paralysis if indeed... Some UFOs exist that simply do not stem from human intelligence. And so we, we've created this culture in our civilization where we look down upon people who claim they've had these kind of experiences because we make the assumption and we feel fully justified that there's no way it can be true. Now, wouldn't it be ironic if the people that were saying that the UFO issue it just encompasses a cult, right? People who believe that this, this whole UFO thing is true, they're just in a cult. And people who, who claim they've had experiences with UFO intelligence, well, they're delusional. Now, I think it would be a supreme irony if it turns out that the people that were making these claims were completely wrong. And would that mean that maybe they were in a cult of mind and that they were the delusional ones to have such certainty about what other people experience when they themselves were not there. Now, that's the exact kind of conversation we are going to have to have in a post-disclosure world, if indeed a post-disclosure world dawns. 
And I, I genuinely hope that if, if there are non-human machines in our airspace on a daily basis that sometimes are seen and sometimes are detected by military sensors, that this comes to light, to light as quickly as possible because it is a moral imperative. I think when we are this mistaken about the nature of our reality, it's actually conducive to immorality. Because now we have put people in boxes in which we never should have before. And we put them in those boxes because we lack proof that there actually is non-human intelligence here. And I think there is. And I don't think I'm in a cult. I think that my assessment of the body of evidence that exists is just better than people who, who think that that's not real evidence. And that even looking at the full 70-year history and all the FOIA-acquired documents that talk about UAP and, 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 and listening to what our members of Congress have to say and the thousands of witnesses all, all over the world, my perspective is that uh, that justifies suspicion that there might be something actually very real to this phenomenon beyond misidentifications. So... Uh, in the final analysis, this is much, this is far exceeds a scientific venture. This is a moral imperative that we prove this as quickly as possible. And I don't care who proves it. I don't care if the government finally gives us that forensic data that proves it, that that 23 minute video, for example, that Elizondo has talked about, where it's just clear as day that that's just not, whatever's in that video is simply not coming from China or Russia. Or if outfits like uh, Project Galileo or UAPX uh, attain forensic proof through, through their scientific ventures. I really don't care. But it's a moral imperative if it's real. And if it's not real, well then great. You know, hey, I believe there's a God. I pray to my God every single day. And maybe I'm deluding myself. Maybe there is no God. And maybe when I pray to God, I'm just talking to myself and there's no one there to listen. Well, oh, big deal. Big deal. You know, I think all of us human beings delude ourselves about something. Maybe, maybe a, a staunch skeptic doesn't delude themselves about um, the existence of, of quote-unquote supernatural things, but the human mind is, is very fallible. They delude themselves about other things, about beliefs about the world and philosophy and what's right and what's wrong and, and other things. We're all to some degree or another, deluding ourselves because we're all fallible. And yeah, some of us may be better at not deluding ourselves than others, but my point is that we, we are a very imperfect species. And, and, and there's a lot of uh, insane things about our culture that we believe or that we subscribe to, some of us, and, and think that, that that's intelligent and then that's moral when it may not be. So we're all very flawed. And, and, I, and I, I know this is kind of a weird video, but I haven't put up a video in a while, and I'm just going to probably just publish this. And I hope if, if, if there are UFOs in our airspace, it gets proven because it's a moral imperative. I'll see you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.